Welcome back to part two. So hopefully your mind didn't explode when I uh, tried to show you how negative exponents work and how, remember, a negative exponent will never change the sign of the power. It won't make a negative base become, I'm sorry, it won't make a positive base ever become negative. That won't happen, all right? Um, it will take the reciprocal of the number if you have a negative exponent. Okay, well, let's get into how we simplify some powers and then how we uh, simplify some exponential expressions, and that sounds awfully fun for you, I hope. So here we go. Uh, we're at number 12 here as so we continue working through the notes, and uh, let's see what we've got. Um, we've got, there's, they're asking you, are these statements true or false? Okay, well, let's start with 9 to the negative 2. Well, it says, is that 1 over 81? Well, let's see what we learned. If you have a negative exponent, it moves it to the bottom and changes the sign of the exponent. That's what the previous video was about. If you move it from, it's the 9 is in the uh, numerator, 9 to the negative 2, it goes to the bottom and it becomes positive. 9 times 9 is 81, so that is true. It's a true statement. Negative 9 to the 0 is negative 1. Oops! What's wrong with that? No, it's not. It's 1. If you don't believe me, put it in your calculator. Okay, that's false. Negative 9, make sure you put the parentheses in there. If you do that, put it in parentheses to the power of 0. You'll see that it's 1. Okay, so that one's false. Uh, the next one <clears throat> is uh, 9 over 2. 9 to the negative 1. Now, I'm looking at this paper. This is really hard to read on my paper. I think it says negative. I'm going to assume that's a negative 1 9th. So, that is not the answer. It should be equal 1 over positive 9. So, I'm going to say false, but I know it's hard to read on the paper because I think the paper says negative 1 9th. So, let's call it false. It should be positive 1 9th. So, if it says positive 1 9th, that would be true. But you get the point, I hope. And then the uh, last one there, number 15, um, is 9 to the power of 3. Well, that's false because it should be 1 over 9 to the 3rd, which is equal to 1 over 9 times 9 is 81, and times 9 is, what, 729, something like that. So that's false because they, they evaluated the that incorrectly. 9 to the third is not, it's not 9 times 3. And that mistake happens a lot when people multiply. They should okay? So simplifying powers, when you're asked to simplify powers, it basically means, okay, evaluate, if you understand what that means, evaluate, which basically means get it all the way down to a number. Okay, if you can turn the, it into a number without an exponent, do that when you're asked to simplify. Here's an example. Complete each step and simplify 4 to the power of negative 3. All right, so the first thing you should do is move the power to the denominator and make the exponent positive. That's what you always do first. So they took 4 to the negative 3. It's 1 over 4 to the positive 3. And then you take a 4 to the power of 3, which is 4 times 4 times 4. All right, which is 16 times 4. And if you don't remember what that is, that's 24. And 4, that's 64. 1 over 64 is that evaluated there. <clears throat> okay, so let's move on down. Now, this gets a little bit crazy. It says, what is the simplified form of each expression? Okay. So when we talk about simplifying expressions, all right, here's what you have to do. When you have simpli simplified expressions, okay, the key here is that all variable exponents are positive. All right, highlight that. Whoops, positive. Highlight that or underline it whatever you do to, to get the point. All variable exponents are positive. If you have a variable negative exponent that's negative, you have to fix it, you have to change it. All right, the other thing that has to happen is that all numbers are evaluated. 
All right. In other words, that means, okay, like if you take up here where we had that 4, you can't leave 4, to, like in 16, you can't leave it 4 to the 3rd. You have to make that into 64. So those two conditions, condition 1, all variables are positive, variable exponents are positive, and all numbers are completely evaluated. So it says, what is the simplified form of the expression here? All right, number 17. Uh, uh, well, so let's work at this. x, x to the negative 9. If I'm going to simplify that, that means I have to make that exponent positive. So that means I have to move the x as the reciprocal, 1 over x to the 9th. Okay. Well, this one right here, notice what happens here. That means it's 1 over n to the negative 3. So n to the negative 3 is in the denominator. So what do you think, if that's currently in the denominator, what do you think is going to happen to the n if I change that exponent to positive? It moves to the top. It has to move up if I change that exponent to positive. So that answer is just n to the power of 3. You could say n to the power of 3 over 1, but that's what it would become. Now this one is a really interesting one. I'll change colors to red here. The exponent on the 4, it's 4 times c to the negative 3 times b. The exponent on the 4 is a 1. The exponent on the c is a negative 3. The exponent on the b is a 1. So what you have to do is you have to move the exponent that is negative to either the top or the bottom, okay, and then leave, but you don't want to move the ones that have a positive exponent. Well, 4 to the 1, that's already evaluated as 4. But c to the negative 3, we have to change that to a positive exponent, right? So that moves that to the, we take the reciprocal of c to the negative 3, which moves it here, that's c to the 3rd. Now when I moved it to the denominator, it made it positive. Now the b to the 1 currently is a positive exponent, so you don't want to move the b, and that stays there. Okay, and that's the answer. 4b over c to the 3rd is the, is the evaluated form of that, or the simplified form of that expression. Alright, how about the next one? 2. 2 to the 1, that's a positive exponent, so that's going to stay in the numerator. Now, a to the third is currently in the denominator, but I have to change it to a positive exponent that's going to move it to the numerator, a to the positive 3. Because that's what happens when you take the reciprocal. If it's in the denominator and you take the reciprocal of it, it's going to be a to the th 3 over 1, and that would be 2 times a to the third. And then the last one, I'll evaluate down here, or simplify down here, currently the numerator is n to the negative 5. So that has to change. The negative 5 has to change. So n to the negative 5 is going to move to the bottom. And m to the 2 is going to stay in the bottom because that's already positive. So what do you think we're going to put in the numerator there? 1. Okay, because it's 1. Oh, when you took the reciprocal, it, it put a 1 there. You can think of it like that. All right, that's how those are evaluated. And uh, I'm going to give you a hint here, a way to remember this and make it really easy for you. It'll be really helpful for you later after we answer these two questions. To simplify a base in the numerator that has a negative exponent, move the base to the denominator and write a positive exponent. All right, if it's a negative exponent in the numerator, you're going to move it to the denominator and make it positive. That's what we did in each one of these examples here. Number 18. If you have a base in the denominator that is negative exponent, move the base to the numerator and write a positive exponent again. All right, so here's a trick to remember, as confusing as this is. All right, think of it like this. Upstairs, this is just a cheap trick to know how to work through it correctly. Downstairs. All right, if you would imagine a fraction, like all these fractions here, 1 over n to the negative 3, or all of those over 1, okay, or that over that. All right, if you would imagine a fraction like upstairs and downstairs, all right, if you change the sign of a fraction, you have to change its location, bottom line, okay.
Okay, change the sign. Change sign. Change location. All right. If you don't, I said change the sign, which I really mean exponent. You have to change the exponent, and I can't write again. My writer is not a nice writer at home. If you change the exponent, you have to change its location. And that's what I did right here. X to the negative 9 over 1, it's upstairs. I want to make that positive, I move it downstairs. You've got to replace it with a 1. This one right here, into the negative 3, basement, move it upstairs to make it positive. This one, 4, C to the negative 3, and B are all upstairs. But that negative 3 has to move downstairs and change its sign. Everything else stays. All right. Hopefully that helps you. All right. I'm late again, but i got to do another video because there's a lot of stuff here. So I'll stop this one and be right back.